Good morning, folks. How are we all doing? This is Declan McCabe recording this in my shed where I'm socially isolated from pretty much everybody. But uh, let's pretend I'm at St. Michael's College and off we go. Uh, I'd like to introduce a kind of a cool project to you folks today. Um, this is partly going out to the Vermont EPSCoR high school audience, but um, it applies to anybody. If you, wanna, if you are someone who's interested in natural history, and you want to have uh, participate in a wonderful project uh, in Vermont and beyond Vermont, um, then this is for you. So let me see if I can figure out how to share my screen. And away we go. Okay, should be in business. So uh, I'm representing the Center for Workforce Development, which is a Vermont EBSCoR program designed to increase participation in science. And I'm also a professor at St. Michael's College. So let's see. Looks like um, my slides will not advance. Oh, there we go. So um, some folks have gotten together to organize something called the Vermont Backyard BioBlitz. It's the Spring BioBlitz. And uh, it takes place from April 20th to May 20th. You can jump in anytime you like. You can be as active as you'd like, or you can just participate for a day. Maybe spend a day with your kids in the woods and see some cool things and actually contribute to a larger project. It's organized by the North Branch Nature Center and it is hosted on iNaturalist. So what do you need? First thing you need is an iNaturalist account, which will cost you nothing. Um, you simply go to the iNaturalist site and um, you can just, just sign up. It's very, very easy. Um, there's the, the, the uh, URL. It's www.inaturalist.org. And there is on the right hand side a place where you can log in or join. Okay. And I believe that's covered up at the moment in the video, but you'll have to trust me. All right then. And um, once you're in there, there's something else you can join, and that is the Vermont Spring Backyard BioBlitz. And you can see all the various logos on there, people who have sponsored and been involved in the event. But uh, North Branch Nature Center were the folks who introduced me to the idea. And you can see, in I've already joined, so on my screen it says I can leave, which I will not do. But uh, yours will say join. And when I set this up, there were 120 members, and hopefully there'll be many, many more by the time you sign up. So, so far they've got 837 observations, which it's only a few days in. I think that's pretty impressive. And you can see that there are 68 of the 120 people who joined who are active observers already. And there are even more people who are labeled as identifiers. And that's an interesting thing about iNaturalist. Once you put up a, an image, maybe you've put something up that, and you've got no idea what it is. Put that up there, there are people who will be interested in the group and get in there and help you identify it. Um, if you do put up something, let's say you put up a plant and you, you know it's a plant, it's a green thing with leaves, um, but you have no idea what it is other than that. It is helpful just to call it a plant and then the plant people can actually be aware of it and come in and help you identify it. So they've got 288 species so far in the uh, Vermont Backyard BioBlitz, which is pretty impressive as far as I'm concerned. I, I don't know that I've seen 288 species in the last few days, but collectively, all of these people have. So automatically, your observations will also be added to the Vermont Atlas of Life. And um, for participants in EPSCoR who are beyond Vermont, uh, you can do this um, project without, you can do it for your own locality. You don't have to be part of the Vermont Backyard BioBits. There may be one in your home area. Um, but regardless, you can put observations on iNaturalist. And it's a good thing to do to share data with the broader community. Um, Vermont Atlas of Life, here's some stats from those folks, and you can see they're uh, up, you know, approaching 400,000 observations, you know, 8,000 species, lots and lots of active participants um, contributing data to the Vermont Atlas of Life. And as I said, any observations in Vermont that you upload, um, once they reach a certain uh, status as far as being identified and things, they'll be automatically added to the Vermont Atlas of Life. So you can contribute. Um, how you contribute? You need either a smartphone or a digital camera. Simple as that. Um, any way to get an image onto a computer, that's what you need. So 
uh, you can photograph something living, dead, or any other evidence of life and uh, put it up there. Here's some examples that I pulled from the, the Backyard BioBits project. These are some uh, wood frog eggs that a, a user named Mountain Mermaid uploaded. You can give yourself any cool uh, uh, username you like. Here are some flowers that were uploaded. I don't remember the name of the flower, but it's beautiful. I'm quite sure that the users will have identified it. And then these are some um, coyote uh, feces that were photographed by Nick Sharp. And I'm emphasizing here that really any evidence of life is, is welcome on the site, okay? So on we go, if you're using a smartphone, first thing you need to do is get the iNaturalist app. It's a free app, download it, and um, there are no advertisements. They're not trying to sell you anything. And uh, once you've got the app installed, um, you're gonna click observe. And once you've clicked that, um, you see it's got a camera logo and uh, you can take a new photograph right there on the spot. If you've got cool pictures you've accumulated in your camera, um, your cell phone, you can grab those existing photos. And in fact, if you've got photographs that you've taken you know, of any organism for the past, you know, however long you've had your phone, you can actually put those into iNaturalist and the app will automatically track the um, date and it also will automatically track the location from your iPhone, which is an amazing feature as far as I'm concerned because I don't have to worry about telling um, iNaturalist where I took the picture. It knows. A little scary, I guess. If you're using a camera, you will have to tell the computer the location by, by navigating on the map. Easy to do. But you transfer your photos to a computer, however you're gonna do that, stick an SD card in there, or uh, email them to yourself, or whatever it takes to get your pictures onto your computer. Log into iNaturalist on your computer. And uh, all you gotta do then is add observations. And the observations, you can just navigate to your photographs. And as I said, you'll have to um, do some tweaking on the map to find out precisely. You'll have to remember where you took your picture and you'll have to ad ad adjust that. Now, if you've forgotten where you took your picture, let's say you knew that you took it somewhere in Burlington, well, then you can draw a large circle on the map around so you're not being very precise. If you know precisely that you took it at this particular location where a stream crosses a, a trail, well, then you can zoom in tighter and make a tighter circle. So you can, you can handle it any way you like there. All right, the last thing you need to do is the fun part. You just need to get out and observe nature. So. Uh, you can go wherever you want within the limits set by the the, uh, the governor at the moment because of the coronavirus. Um, wear your mask if necessary. And uh, the woods tend to be good places to avoid people and practice your social distancing. Here are some observations that I've taken in the last few days. So we've got some raccoon footprints over here. There's an eastern hemlock. You know, if you're going to photograph a tree, you might want to do a broad picture of the tree followed by a picture of the leaf, uh, maybe a picture of the buds. You can add three or four or more images to the same observation. So it helps people identify um, what the tree is. Uh, this is a gray squirrel. You can barely see him in the picture. This was a um, garter snake, and you can see there's quite a swelling right there. I don't know if the garter snake has recently eaten or is about to give birth, but the garter snake was out sunning himself uh, or herself um, when I was wandering by. Here are some bobcat footprints. I found this bone. Um, I suspect that it's a deer bone. Um, I put a little card down next to it for scale because with you know something like that, it's hard. I mean, if this could have been a rodent bone, you know, it would be a very different scale. This is a flower called bloodroot, and then this is a great egret over here. You see a great egret? Everyone see it? It's very spectacular photography right there. Um, you don't have to be a gifted photographer to do this. Um, if you are, well, hey, you know, who am I to fight you? Put your good pictures up there. Um, here is Kyle Tansley's work. Kyle is a gifted wildlife photographer. And, um, you know, uh, if I could take photographs like that, I would. Um, I'm particularly impressed with the great horned owl, great horned owl here being mobbed by uh, possibly a raven, possibly a crow. Um, but Kyle takes amazing pictures. If that's you, then I encourage you by all means to share your gift with the rest of us. All right, for my EPSCOR people in particular, you probably have some images of macroinvertebrates from your research project. And if you do, 
you can join the select few people who actually put macroinvertebrates from streams and, and, and water bodies onto iNaturalist. We'd love to have more people doing that. So here's an example. This is a user in Pennsylvania. I suspect he's a graduate student doing a research project, but quite regularly uh, he contributes pictures that will be familiar to many of the high school participants um, in the program. So you've probably all seen black flies and, you know, uh, filtering collecting caddisflies, and maybe you've seen some snails and flapworms and other things. But um, it's, it's, a, it's an unusual skill that you've got, and it may seem like, you know, uh, old hat to you by now, but on the broad scale, scale of things, uh, putting macroinvertebrates onto the site is rare. So I'll give you an example here. This is the non-biting midges. Non-biting midges are extraordinarily common. They are in every natural water body that I have sampled. Literally every stream, every lake, every pond, I always find them. They also show up in gutters and buckets and tires that are filled with water. Um, you know, they, they literally can reproduce almost anywhere. And uh, yet there are only a small number of observations somewhere on the, I, I can't see it because I'm locking it, but it's a very small number. Let's see, it's 402 observations of, of you know, one of the most common insects that I am aware of. Um, if you, you know, they're vastly more common than any bird, any mammal. And yet, if you go on iNaturalist and look for gray squirrels, there are 21,000 observations, right? So um, I believe the high school participants in the program, if you've got some of your bug pictures, we would love to see them contributed to iNaturalist. They won't be part of the backyard file bits because your photographs were probably taken before December. But um, by all means, get them up there. We'd love to see them. Um, whatever your special skill is, there's a place for an iNaturalist. Here's somebody in Florida who has a trail camera. And uh, they get spectacular pictures that would be quite hard to get otherwise. If that's you, you've got a trail camera, by all means, put them on up there. Whatever your special skill is. I'm sort of a generalist. I like to wander around. You know, there's raccoon footprints. Dutchman's breeches just started growing. Um, here's a, a, a photograph of a robin through the window screen on my, on my back deck. Um, it's clearly identifiable as a robin, even though the photography is not great. This is uh, probably the best photograph I've taken in a while. Some Canada geese out there, and there's a little earlier one. We had a gray squirrel and a skunk that happened to ramble by in the daytime. If you see that, you probably should report it to the Board of Health. Um, daytime skunks are probably not healthy and uh, worth a phone call. So. You can be part of something larger, folks. I encourage you to, to go do it, and I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found this video useful, and uh, I thank you for your attention. And then the puzzle for me is always how to get out of this thing. Let's see. I believe I can stop recording down here somewhere. Yes, bye folks. It's been fun. <laughs>